Okay, <clears throat> welcome back to my new GN4 tutorial. Um, in this video, I would like to explain something which I have been asked a few times uh, in the comment section, and this is related to timing. Yeah? So I will explain now how to write out uh, the time information of a particle which hits a sensitive detector for example and then later you can use this time information in order to um, do some very simple analysis. And in order to do that uh, I would say we directly dive into the topic and we edit our um, detector construction that we have uh, created before and for that we edit construction.cc and construction. Uh, edge edge and uh, this is important because I would like to change the geometry in a way that we can just create a very simple setup. I don't want to use the uh, one which exists already uh, just because uh, it it, uh, it will be more difficult to show how it works so I will create a very simple setup uh, just for the time being and uh, the first thing which I would like to do is increasing the world volume a little bit more. Yeah? So instead of um, half meter I want to make it uh, I want to create a half fifth of uh, five meter. And um, then in the next step, I would uh, like to create a new variable. Um, so we have already uh, used one for um, the Cherenkov setup and we have created one for the scintillator setup. So now I would like to create a new bool, boolean, which is called, uh, for example, is tough for is time of light. And what we will create now is a very simple time of flight setup. And um, the scintillator one should be also by default false. And um, TOF should be defined by default as true. And of course, we should be also able to change that later. Uh, so we can write here, for example, um, declare property uh, TOF for time of flight. And the variable is TOF. And here we can write construct time of light. Okay, and then of course uh, we have to create that function and here we create then another void and we can call that construct uh, tof and uh, this we can do then maybe just at the end before we construct our overall detector and the world volume. So we can write here uh, void uh, my detector construction um, and similar to um, the Cherenkov setup and the scintillator setup we can write now uh, construct not scintillator but construct tof and we can use um, the previously defined volumes so in this case for example solid detector so we don't have to create a new one and we can write here new g4 box uh, and we call that maybe solid detector and we want to uh, maybe have a half width of one meter. Basically it doesn't matter so much um, but it's just um, for convenience and a thickness of maybe uh, 0.1 meter. And then of course we have to create a logic detector and again as usual we have to um, write here first the solid which would be solid detector then the material in this case we want to just use the world material we don't want to create any light for example so the particle should go through it without any interaction um, and then uh, the name of that and this is in this case again logic detector and then we have to create two physical detectors as i said we want to create a time of flight setup so it means we need two detectors one uh, at one position and the other one quite far away from that and for that we can use our first detector variable that or object that we have created before and then we can use here um, the g4 pv placement um, class and again zero rotation and the translation we can do with g4 three vector and maybe the first one it will be centered in x and y direction and the position in z direction should be maybe um, minus four meter and then we can actually uh, write here the object of our logic detector which is just logic detector we can give the name as usual first detector 
um, the mother volume which is logic world um, it, here we have to write false as usual here we give the number zero later for the second one we have to put a one there so we have a unique identification and then here we write true for checking the overlaps and now because we want to actually create two of them we can just copy paste that and because we create this here on the heap uh, we don't have to define a new object basically we can just overwrite that other one it will not change anything um, and it should be maybe placed uh, let's suppose uh, three meter in that direction so we have an overall distance of seven meter and as I said here we have to put a one but um, since we are not writing out this uh, this piece of information I think it also doesn't matter so much and now the last thing which we have to do we have to go to our uh, world volume construction and there we have to write if is tough true then we actually uh, construct our uh, time of light setup and now we can test it whether it worked well and uh, as usual we create now or we build now our um, our program with the make command and um, now we can actually run it and you can see that we have two tiles now, two time of light uh, tiles of a detector in a certain distance of seven meters in that direction. And now we can uh, test this by uh, creating some particles. And in order to do that, um, we can actually just edit our run macro that we have previously created. And uh, we don't want our radioactive decay. So now we have to specify which particle we want to create. And uh, yeah, first of all, I would say we want maybe uh, 100 uh, particles. And uh, then we have to define a momentum, which is at, at the moment set to zero. So we will use the command mo uh, momentum amp and we set it maybe to one GeV, which is a good value, I think. And we have to set the position uh, of our particle. So let's suppose we want to create it um, in the center in the xy plane and in minus five meter away from the center of uh, of the origin basically of our coordinate system uh, so it will be created in front of the of the first tile and then we can make sure that it actually hits both tiles uh, after a certain time and then um, we also have to define our particle that we want to create so maybe we can use a proton kion or what I usually like to prefer is um, a pion, a pi plus particle, but actually it doesn't matter so much. So now our particle definition is basically complete. And now the only thing which is still missing is the possibility to write out the time information. And to, for that, we have to go to our run.cc, which we have created uh, in the beginning. And, um, and maybe here below our uh, wavelength that we write out we create another n tuple d column and we write here for example ft just for the time so now we have another column where we can store the time of each hit when the particle hits our sensitive detector and uh, yeah in order to do that we go to our detector cc file and we have already uh, several uh, methods here with which we can r uh, store the momentum and the position of the particle so now we just create another double and we call that maybe time and we can again take the pre-step point or we can take the post-step point or we can take an average from that it doesn't matter so much because the tiles are quite thin um, and in this case we just get the global time now yeah? so there are two possibilities actually you can either uh, get the local time of the particle which starts counting when the particle is created or the global time which is created or which is reset to zero every time when a new event starts so in this case it actually doesn't matter uh, because the particle is created at the beginning of each event so the global time is equal to the local time however when a particle decay is applied for example uh, then the local time of each particle differs from the global time this one has to keep in mind uh, so global time is normally i think the one which you like because this is the 
time of our of your readout now the the start time of our readout the trigger time for example whereas the local time cannot be accessed in a normal way okay um and then we have to as i said we have to write it out so we can write here now fill and tuple the column zero five and then here we have to put our time and now we have to write one time cmake to copy the run file to our build folder and hopefully if i have not done anything wrong uh, we can just type in sim and then run dot mac and yeah it's quite fast because we are not creating any optical photons anymore and when we then take a look at our output zero dot root file we should actually see in the photon section uh, nothing because i have to first compile it which i have forgotten but nevertheless it should be quite fast and then we can run it again and then after that we go into our uh, output zero dot root and hopefully now we can see here our time information yeah and one thing i forgot uh, of course um, this happens to me several times and this is uh, the fact that we still stop and kill our track uh, so we have to comment that out otherwise the particle will be killed as soon as it um, hits the first scintillator tile so this we have to uncomment and we have to now run it again and hopefully i have not done any further mistake and we can actually see now two peaks here yes so these are not pure gaussians um, due to many several reasons um, I think fitting a Gaussian will also not work uh, perfectly. Nevertheless, maybe one can take the mean value from here. Um, so the mean value of, of the first peak here would be something like 3.3 um, uh, nanosecond. Uh, this is the time when the particle hits the first scintillator tile. And um, we can keep this in mind. And maybe we can now actually try to fit another Gaussian here, which is also working. And here it would be 26.8 nanosecond. So um, for that purpose, we can just use our maybe calculator and we can write here 26.8 minus 3.3, uh, which leads to 23.5. And then we need the distance that we have uh, defined before. And as I said, we took seven meters into account. Sorry. <clears throat> of course, you have to take it uh, the other way around. You have to divide 7 divided by 23.5. And then we get a value of 0 0.29. Um, so actually 2.9 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second, which is, as you know, very close to the speed of light. So although we have chosen 1 giga electron volt for the particle, we are getting a value which is almost C. Yeah, so in principle, this proves that everything works well. We can write out our timing. We can also um, yeah, put some jitter on the timing. We can use a TDC uh, for, for the hits class uh, or for the hits um, tree in order to um, get some smearing and some, uh, uh, some binning effects uh, similar to a real readout. You can also maybe add some dead time to that and so on. Um, and then you can really simulate a very nice time of flight system as it is used in many high energy physics experiments. Uh, uh, for example, Panda, there I know that uh, there the uh, barrel time of flight is used, um, which con contains uh, scintillation tiles. And it's especially used for low momentum particles where it works the best. And of course, the larger the distance, the better it works. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, so um, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video. This is everything which I want to show today. Um, if you have any questions, as usual, put it into the comment section. Um, and yeah, if you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe my channel and uh, hopefully see you soon uh, for the next GN4 video. Thank you very much.